Okay. Welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Church in Eugene. My name is Avnas Marsh, and my pronouns are Z and Zir. And I am this morning's worship associate. It's my first time, so be kind. We <laughs> gather in worship to find meaning and to live more deeply. Worship creates connections within, among, and beyond us, calling us to our better selves, calling us to live with wisdom and compassion. So whoever you are, whomever you love, whatever your image of the holy, we're glad you're here. And if today is your first time with us, we'd love to get to know you. So right after service, you're invited to our welcoming room, which is located at the south entrance. And if you're online, the link to our visitor form is being dropped into the chat now. And you may have noticed that we don't have a paper order of service, but you can use your phone to access a copy by scanning the QR codes that are scattered throughout the building. And there you will find the names of authors and composers, and you'll find the text to the choir anthems and resources used in our service. Now let's take a few minutes to greet our neighbors, especially those we don't know yet. Okay, uh, we already have our chalice beautifully lit, so we light the chalice as a symbol of our Unitarian Universalist faith with words from Sophie Zarders and Jay Dodd, a prayer to the transcestors, to the trans ancestors and elders who have guided us here. We honor your legacy with new celebrations. May our bodies persist. Let them shine whole and well. May our minds calibrate to the call of the universe. Let our protest songs transfigure to peace hymns. Let our cultural knowledge produce nourishment. May our homes bustle warm with abundant love. May our communities flourish despite borders. Let our love quake open any lingering shackle. Let our joy obliterate any festering contempt as we bind each other closer we manifest futures more possible. And now, let us say together the words of our mission, which affirm our shared purpose. Empowered by love, we transform ourselves and serve our world. So today is Transgender Day of Remembrance, also known as TDOR. Tidor. Today, we are memorializing the lives of trans folks that have been tragically lost this year. This service can be triggering for people, and we encourage you to take care of yourself throughout the service. If you need a drink of water, if you need to leave the room, if you need to breathe, if you need to cry, please do what is best for you to take care of yourself. And we do have Kleenexes scattered um, throughout the room. And if you see someone who needs a Kleenex, please um, pass them a Kleenex. Thank you. And we also have some of our lay pastoral associates available here today for you to talk with as well. Can I have um, Molly May? and in the back, and Emmett, um, and Sally, please uh, stand up so people can see who you are. So um, please know that they are available to talk with you and will be in our altar memorial space after the service as well. If you are in need of pastoral care, um, they can help you during and or after the service. And Rev Jen and myself, are also available to meet with you. So please schedule an appointment with us if needed. After the service, we have an altar space in the chapel memorializing all the trans lives lost this year. As you enter this sanctuary, and at any point during the service, you may write your joys and sorrows in our book, light a candle 
or place a stone in the water over here in our joys and sorrows area. Those joining from home on Zoom can write prayers of joy and sorrow into the Zoom chat, which will be open until the start of the sermon. And during the week, anyone can go to the pastoral care portal on our website to let our ministers know you need some support. So please join me this morning in our Metta prayer, our prayer for loving kindness. This morning's Metta prayer was composed by Maylee Scott, a Zen priest dedicated to the path of active nonviolence. Maylee leads this practice into the field of engaged Buddhism and social justice, where love is the necessary antidote to the anger that easily rises in the face of injustice and oppression. So let us join into this meta prayer by Mealy Scott. May I be well, loving, and peaceful. May all beings be well, loving, and peaceful. May I be at ease in my body, feeling the ground beneath my seat and feet, letting my back be long and straight, enjoying breath as it rises and falls and rises. May I know and be intimate with body, mind, whatever is feeling or mood calm or agitated, tired or energetic, irritated or friendly. Breathing in and out, in and out, aware moment by moment of the risings and passings. May I be attentive and gentle towards my own discomfort and suffering. May I be attentive and grateful for my own joy and well-being. May I move towards others freely and with openness. May I receive others with sympathy and understanding. May I move towards the suffering of others with peaceful and attentive confidence. May I recall the Bodhisattva of compassion, her 1,000 hands, her instant readiness for action, each hand with an eye in it, the instinctive knowing what to do. May I continually cultivate the ground of peace for myself and others and persist, mindful and dedicated to this work, independent of results. May I know that my peace and the world's peace are not separate, that our peace in the world is a result of our work for justice. May all beings be well, happy, and peaceful. It is time that we see gender as a spectrum instead of two opposite ideals. Emma's, Emma Watson. And like it's too far from my face. I, as a person, find this quote empowering for I'm a gender fluid human who does not always find them myself in the same spot. Though I do not wish today to, to be a sad day, um, I send my best wishes and my love to those who have passed.
In a few minutes, we're going to be reading the names of the people in the United States who have passed by violence, whether self or other inflicted. And if you haven't gone to the TDOR website, it's fairly intense, it's fairly horrific. Sometimes there are a lot of details about the people's lives other than how they passed. Sometimes there are not. But I spent a couple of days last week writing, turned out to be 27 haiku to accompany the bios that were being written for transponders observance later today. And when it came time for us to record them, I recorded 10 of what I had written and other people read uh, some of the other haiku. And I thought I was doing really well getting through 10 bios and the haiku as I was reading and other people were reading. But when I got to the 10th one, and this is Milo Winslow, I started to lose it. Milo took his own life and part of his pain was in the political debate that took place in his city in Lincoln, Nebraska, over the rights of trans people to divert, you know, to exist in his city. We talk a lot when we do talk about the violence that happens to people who are trans or otherwise gender diverse, but we don't possibly think often enough about the violence of the culture and that the very debate about the rights of trans and gender diverse people to exist, what kind of a violence and what kind of suffering that inflicts. So as you go into the chapel, there are many, many, many other worthy lives and people to consider who were loved and loving and had their gifts in the world. But Milo got me. And so I just wanted to read the haiku that I wrote for him because in some ways it sums up so many of the other people's different lives that I encountered as I started to write these poems. So Milo loved, deeply loving, fierce advocate supporting his community. Thank you. So this morning, we have sectioned off 15 chairs in our sanctuary, kind of in the front middle area. On these chairs, we have placed the photos of 15 transgender folks who died violently in the US this past year. This is our attempt at a small memorial to their lives. The big hole this leaves in our congregation represents the big hole left by these good people's tragic absence in our society. However, the Transgender Day of Remembrance website reports that 70 transgender lives were lost to violence in the U.S. this year. That means that if we had a chair here for each of them, none of us would have a place to sit. Think about that for a moment. Our society's continual acceptance and silence around issues of transphobia is what allows this death and violence to occur. Transphobia is not a phenomenon that only occurs far away from our community. No, transphobia and its resulting deaths and violence occurs right here in our Eugene and Springfield communities. To be fully honest with ourselves, we must admit that microaggressions towards our trans siblings are still happening, even right here in this church community. Many of you recently saw transphobia on public display just a few blocks away outside the recent Drag Queen Storytime event. During this event on a Sunday afternoon, 
Protesters showed up outside of the event claiming that allowing an 11 year old to participate in a drag queen story time is child abuse and were yelling transphobic slurs at the people outside of the venue. Many of us here know that drag is a gender bending art form in which a person dresses in clothing and makeup meant to exaggerate a specific gender identity, usually of the opposite sex. People claiming that drag is child abuse are existing in a world of transphobia. This hate and fear that we as society members continue to allow to exist is killing people we love and care about. Transphobia is literally killing our trans siblings, our trans children, our trans friends, our trans partners and family members. If you look at the Transgender Day of Remembrance website, you will see a sharp increase in trans lives lost each year in the US and around the globe. It is getting worse, not better. This cannot be allowed to be the case. It is past time for all of us to work together to stop this culture of violence and hate. According to a study by the Williams Institute at UCLA School of Law, transgender people are four times more likely than cisgender people to experience violent victimization, including rape, sexual assault, and aggravated or simple assault. In addition, households with a transgender person had higher rates of poverty victimization than cisgender households, of property victimization, excuse me, than cisgender households. In 2017, 27, 2018, transgender people experienced 86.2 victimizations per 1,000 people, compared to 21.7 victimizations per 1,000 people for cisgender people. That means that if you are transgender, you are about four times as likely to be verbally, physically, or sexually attacked. We live in a culture of violence that is normalized. We are all a part of this culture of violence that continues to exist. As we memorialize these lives that were tragically taken from us this past year, let us also commit to the work of dismantling systems of violence and oppression that affect all of us and disproportionately affect our trans siblings. We are all in this together. So today, as we read the names of those who have been lost, and as we invite the bell while pausing to recognize their lives, please reflect on how we all are connected to these lives that have been lost. If we do not commit to the work of dismantling these systems of violence, the next victim could be our child, our partner, our parent, our friend or family member, or the person next to us in this sanctuary. In order to remember and honor those who have passed, we are now going to read the names out loud. Please remember that as we read these names, take care of yourself. This is hard. If you need to step out and get water or a Kleenex, or need to step out and breathe, please feel free to do so. We have our lay pastoral associates also here with us today who you can talk to as well. Royal political I'm sorry, Royal Poetical Stars. El Cho. Mel Robert Groves. Teda LeBong. Q. 
Kiva Scatter, Jesse Hart, Joe Acker, Joey Spencer, also called JoJo, Ricky Otomuro, also True Starlet, Jenny DeLeon. Markeisha Lawrence. Danielle Johnson. Angel Naira. Haley Gabriella Feldman. Nakai David. Martina Caldera. Zania Williams. K. Yehona Stone, Amelia Furness, Lionheart. Nikki Turrieta. Mayara Lay. Duval Princess, Matthew Angelo Spampanato, Destiny Lachey, Naomi Skinner, Cypress Ramos, Paloma Vasquez, Milo Winslow, Brentwood, Catherine Newhouse, Elise Mallory. Tatiana LaBelle, TT. Quinn Mauer Gustin. Kesha Webster, Kai Khan, Mia Love Parker, Ariana Mitchell, Fern Feather, Ace Scott. Kenna Lee Gillock, Asher Garcia, Ray Muscat, Ruby Tavener, Michelle S. Tario. Sasha Mason, Nidra Sequence Morris, Maddie Hoffman, Maddie Dickens, Dee Dee Hall, Chanalika Iyala Dior Hemingway, also known as Sid, and Rexy Q. Paris Rich, Brazil Johnson, Sean Manet McClam, Kitty Monroe, Cherry Bush, Jasper Aaron Lynch, Jimmy J. Lee. Martasia Richmond, 
Toy Davis. Keisha Chanel Getter. Camilla Marie Swan, also known as Dee Dee and Candy Red. Hayden Neva Davis. Maricelo Castro. Kimbella Kimball. ACD Morrison. Dee Dee Ricks. Regina Allen, also called Maya. Samaj Sincere Billingsley and Serena Brenneman. All the unaccounted for lives lost. And unfortunately, the lives of those LGBTQ plus lost this weekend in Colorado Springs to transphobia, homophobia, in the gay club shooting. May we remember these lives and may we commit to changing ourselves and our transphobic culture and society that continues to construct barriers against transgender and non-binary people in ways that threaten their mental, mental and physical well-being. We are not truly free from violence and oppression unless we are all free from violence and oppression. We must do better. But how can we do better? Remember that quote that Eli read to us earlier? Let me repeat it for you. It is time that we all see gender as a spectrum instead of two opposing ideals. Emma Watson. The first steps are internal work our self-work. Realizing that gender is on a spectrum allows us all to see ourselves on the same team. Team human. We are all on the gender spectrum somewhere. Where are you on the gender spectrum? Think about that for a second. Now let's all think about something a little harder to digest. Where in ourselves have we seen our transphobic biases turn up? We all have these biases because we are all part of the transphobic culture that we live in. We must begin to recognize our judgments that come up when we hear about an 11 year old participating in drag queen story time. Why couldn't an 11 year old be able to participate in drag queen story time? Why do some of us in our community think this is wrong when really it is a form of gender expression? Why does this hate and fear exist? It is up to all of us to examine our own transphobia and then work towards collectively liberating ourselves from these transphobic biases. As with many things, the work starts within ourselves. Let us each be honest with ourselves about our shortcomings and work towards doing just a little better every day. The next steps are external. This is our work in community with others. What are some ways we as community members can put an end to transphobia? One way is by recognizing microaggressions, prejudices, judgments, and discrimination 
that is happening within us, around us, and within our communities. I know for a fact that trans folks in our community are not free from experiencing microaggressions. What is a microaggression? A microaggression is indirect, subtle, or unintentional discrimination against members of a marginalized group. For example, if I were to go directly up to a member of the trans community and ask them if they were trans without them providing this information to me first, this would be a microaggression. This type of question when first meeting someone can make people feel other, which then can make them feel unsafe. Always recognize someone as human first. Conversely, I wouldn't go up to a person who identifies as cisgender male and ask them if they're male. I wouldn't do that. This is not how I greet a person I do not know. Instead, I can greet a person who might be different from me by introducing myself to them. Why do I need to know even before I meet someone if they are transgender or not? Why do I think I feel entitled to that information? If a transgender or non-binary or cisgender person wants you to know that they are transgender, cisgender, or non-binary, that information might be given to you later as the person develops trust with you. One way that communities like ours have helped mitigate some of these issues is by introducing ourselves with our pronouns if we so choose. The recognition of people's pronouns can help to mitigate questions like, are you trans? Which really is not relevant to your interaction with that person as a fellow human being. If you are unsure of which pronouns to use for a person, ask. It's that simple. Hello, my name is Tina, and I use she, her pronouns. What is your name? These are easy ways to make people feel welcome in community. Another way we can help one another put an end to transphobia in our community is to speak out when we see or hear problematic behavior. For microaggressions that you may hear, even here in our church, you can pull that person aside and let them know that what they said or did might have made that person uncomfortable and the reasoning why. There are some other techniques that we can all brush up on today in more violent scenarios of transphobia that we encounter in our communities. These techniques are the four Ds to being a bystander intervener. Direct, distract, delegate, and delay. Direct, intervene directly. By intervening in the moment, bystanders may give the concerned person a chance to get to a safe place or leave a situation. Distract. Distract either party. You can distract the aggressor by asking them a question and or to walk with you. You can distract the victim by helping them get away from the aggressor. Delegate. Bring in someone else to help. Delay. Check in later. Bystanders can reach out to those affected to link them with resources or offer emotional support. Lastly, let us as a community celebrate trans and non-binary lives. We come together to celebrate our differences and our similarities. All of these lives we have lost this year were people with joys and struggles just like all of us. These people were contributing members of society. We are not here to say that these people were not thriving. Many of these people were thriving when their lives were unjustly cut short. Let us celebrate their lives and successes while working as a community to break down the barriers that threaten the mental and physical well-being of trans and non-binary lives. Transphobia, affects all of us.
because all of our liberation is bound with one another's liberation. We are not free until all of us are free. May we remember these lives and may we commit to changing ourselves and our transphobic culture and society. We must commit to the internal and external work that is necessary for our culture of transphobia and violence to change. It is past time for all of us as humans on the spectrum of gender to put an end to these deaths. We must work on ourselves and work in our communities together. Let us commit to changing our transphobic culture and the violence that it condones. We are all human. And as such, this violence is killing all of us. We can change this. Please make a silent commitment to this cause right now. I don't know about anybody else, but I need to breathe. <clears throat> Good morning, fellow UUC Eugene members and visitors. My name is Liz LaVenture. I am a transgender woman. I use the pronouns she and her. Sometimes something makes you so sick at heart that you can't even passively take part. That's from a famous speech, more on that later. I wasn't going to come or be even be involved today because that quote sums up my feelings after 10 years of attending and participating in TDOR observances. I'm sorry, but that's how I feel. I have trauma and I have empathy for the trauma that the dozens of trans people we have lost each year have suffered. Every time I learn about the murder of a trans person, it rips a piece out of my heart. We, as an inclusive trans community, are a community that others want to murder, deny jobs or housing, our access to playing sports in our true gender. They would even deny us access to public restrooms. They want to erase our existence. Transgender Day of Remembrance is about the targeted murder of trans people, full stop, and it makes me sick at heart. Now a larger excerpt from that speech I began with, quote, there's a time when the operation of the machine becomes so odious, makes you so sick at heart that you can't take part. You can't even passively take part and you have got to put your bodies upon the gears and upon the wheels, upon the levers, upon all the apparatus, and you have got to make it stop. Unless you are free, the machine will be prevented from working at all." End quote. That's from Mario Savio at UC Berkeley, 1964. Now it's been shown time and again since 1964 that we, however we define we, are unable to stop the machine. Even if we did, what then? As someone else said on the same subject of the machine, the point is to change it. So our goal as trans folks and our allies should be change, to change the machine. It seems to me we have our own gears, community trauma, empathy for those who have suffered a tragic and needless death, and desire for change. We can, we must insert ourselves, our gears, into the machine, create pressure by the weight of our numbers and sense of urgency, a lever, if you will, and shift the paradigm, the operational design of the machine, into one that we are truly a part of and can live in and thrive. What does the systemic change look like? We each change how we look at and interact with people who don't look like us. For instance, how we think a female should look, present, as female, or what male looks like, or how a person should present, 
male or a person who doesn't want to be put in a binary either or box. It seems obvious to me that there is no one way to be, to live, to express and celebrate our shared humanity as we each become more accepting, affirming, and inclusive and welcome each other with open arms, we, trans and allies, speak out, advocate, educate, and include more people into our vision of an inclusive society. From our combined numbers, creating a lever, in turn growing in size and strength, we, our gears, are already in the machine. We can also become the lever, the lever of change. The pressure of our sheer numbers changes the machine, society, into one that has empathy for all, fosters inclusion for all, and loves all who live here. It is my hope that one day TDOR will be a distant memory, one taught in schools, something to Google, like Mario Savio's speech. Thank you. I bow in gasso and gratitude for your attention and respect. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. And please join us in the chapel after the service to view our altar memorial space. Um, and folks on Zoom can also join and view this space by logging in at 1130 using the online coffee hour link. Um, and the altar memorial space will be open until 1215. And please also join the children in planting daffodils bulbs after the service as well. And if you would also like to join the carpool for the Transgender Day of Remembrance at the university, please meet here at 215. And now may we go from this place remembering that we are the change makers. The land over that rainbow that we dream of is possible. Let us commit internally and externally to put pressure on the machine, society of violence and transphobia. The lever can and will flip. May we as a community pressure society with our empathy, our loving kindness, our inclusivity, and our love for all. May our commitment to personal and communal change make TDOR a distant memory, something to Google. May it be so, and let's get to work. <laughs>